Southwest Florida, welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. We're here at Mount Hermon Ministries for a symposium that's taking place this evening. Lee Pitts Live is thrilled to be the media sponsor, virtual symposium on racism in her voice. I tell you, I've um, been in this area for over 30 years now and covering a lot of events and doing a lot of things over that period of time, and interviewing over 25,000 people and going to all types of places. Had the pleasure of seeing Southwest Florida from all different angles. But I tell you one thing, I've never experienced anything like this, what's happening at Mount Hermon Ministries over the past few months. The various symposiums that have taken place that are really getting into the nuts and bolts of educating our people, un unapologetically talking out loud about things that need to be talked about. So I want to commend Mount Hermon Ministries on that. And I got the uh, pastor here, Pastor William Glover. Welcome back to Leap is Live. Thank you, Lee. You just heard my soliloquy on you guys getting out front and unapolog unapologetically talking with no editing, no filter. Tell me about the concept and the thought process of having that type of forum where everybody is free to speak their mind. I think that's the only way to pave a path forward. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, number one, um, having the courage to speak truth to power. And number two, having the fortitude to give people an opportunity to speak truth uh, from their perspective as they understand it to be, mm -hmm. and then to discuss those things where there might be differences. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you have indicated, uh, we're dealing with some uh, very heavy topics and we're just really trying to take them to a next level of conversation uh, so that there can be some progress in the dialogue. We've got all these factors coming together now in this long period of time with the pandemic, with the social unrest throughout the country, and that social unrest is circled around racism. And you're starting to see some policies already starting to be made. Uh, people just seem to have gotten sick and tired of being sick and tired of some systemic racism. Define systemic. Systemic. In this case. Yes, yeah, something is systemic when it is reflected in the values when it's reflected in the institutions and when it's reflected in the laws, then it becomes systemic. So when we talk about systemic racism, then we see that we can, sh we can say, see that racism is reflected in the values. Case in point, the issue on policing. One of the values that we are seeing is that when officers too often encounter black lives, those lives don't matter. Simplest things, those lives end up dying. So that's a value issue. Uh, laws, the, the systemic part of that deals with the protections of the officers that prevent them from being held accountable. Mm -hmm. All of those laws are highly favorable to officers. It's a shield, it protects them, and more times than not, there are no consequences for those unjust shootings. And then um, uh, uh, the institutions and the leaders that run them uh, reinforce those values and those laws. So that's what we mean by systemic. And the fact that we have females here giving their perspective, you being the head of this particular church, how easy was that for you to just step in the background, let the ladies take control? Uh, it was very easy <laughs> okay. because we have very uh, powerful, uh, capable women uh, in this church who are part of our leadership. And as I uh, said earlier, I cannot imagine our congregation uh, without the value they add. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been involved enough and been around enough in the community to know that this community is blessed with uh, powerful women in their own right who have powerful voices and have something to say on these issues uh, that can add value. So coming off of the last symposium, uh, Cheryl approached me with this idea of doing something with the women. And I said, you know what, I think this is a brilliant idea. You host it, you put the women together, and let's, you know, uh, follow the, 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 the format or tweak it, mm -hmm. but let's, let's run with it. And, and that's how we got here tonight. And you guys are a great panel here. I'll talk to Cheryl about it uh, later on in more detail. And I'll talk to some of the women, black women. Uh, the, um, going back to the systemic racism, the name of this symposium is Virtual Symposium of Racism in her voice. Mm -hmm. In general, because you have been uh, screaming from the mountaintops for years about some of the things that have been taking place in society. You've been speaking out on them. 
as it relates to racism, particularly as it relates to law enforcement and things like that. Now that it's on the national stage, it's all over the place, more people are learning things that have been taking place that you have been talking about for years. More people are learning about that. How does that make you feel? Well, uh, wonderful. And also, it's cultivated an environment to where we can have platforms, we can teach, we can educate. Uh, as you know, my doctoral dissertation, dissertation uh, was on systemic injustice. And uh, so um, it's just creating an environment where, whereas I'm, I'm having to generate interest, the interest is there. And uh, I've been able to, uh, to your platform, uh, radio, uh, webinars, um, uh, multiple platforms, advancing the conversation on these issues. So I, I feel like uh, I was made for this time. Mm -hmm. uh, that reminds me in, in all sincerity uh, in looking at what you had been doing over the time and, and, and the recent death of Congressman John Lewis started off young. I think he came out of the church as mm -hmm. well. I'm minister. sure you've been seeing some of the yes. uh, exposés yes. on him. Yes. Uh, the, he, he was dealing with this, he, Dr. King and the rest of mm -hmm. them, way back mm -hmm. in the ninth, late 50s, early mm -hmm. 60s and 70s. And now everybody seems to uh, celebrate people like that mm -hmm. later on in life, looking yes. back at history. Yes. Yes. Just in general, your thoughts on particularly Congressman John Lewis and his contribution to the progress of the disenfranchised in America. I think uh, Congressman John Lewis represents a generation of Americans and specifically African American Americans who paid a price at the most crucial moment to push America mm -hmm. to live up to, as Dr. Keynes would often say, her great ideas about who we were were a country. America has never volunteered to ascend to those levels. She's always had to be pushed by uh, the voices that she has disenfranchised. And uh, um, John Lewis is one of those voices who paid a personal price in his in his youth mm -hmm. and went on, got involved in government at the federal level, has been a tremendous legislator. And even in uh, his last days, uh, spoke with mm -hmm. such dignity and eloquence and grace about the vision of America uh, and uh, the, the continued need to push for justice. And, and, and if I may, I, I think we have to break the false narrative that those who fight for justice are anti-American. I think those who fight for justice are the most American mm -hmm. because we want that for all of America's citizens and not just some. You. I, I haven't asked you this, but I'm sure you read Dr. King's letter mm -hmm. from the jail, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody should read that letter. I think clergy should read that Absolutely. letter. Absolutely. <laughs> because he called clergy out. Absolutely. Take a cup, take something in that letter. I don't want you to just talk about the letter, all the details of the letter, but that, 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 that what he said in that letter that should inspire, push clergy to get up, to speak out. Well, uh, and, and, and this is uh, a summation uh, mm -hmm. of, of the it, Birmingham paraphrase, mm -hmm. but there's a section where he does call clergy out, and he calls them out for failing to be a prophetic voice uh, at that time, for failing to speak truth to power, and calling for them in the, tra in the tradition of Amos, mm -hmm. who spoke truth to the rulers and the nobles of his day, the politicians uh, and the wealthy people of his day, and called for justice across all sectors of society to run down as rivers and uh, uh, waters as a mighty stream. And, um, and I think that's where we are today. I've had conversation with many clergy, and many have been moved, have been mm -hmm, pricked because mm -hmm. of the circumstance, but there is this apprehension, and I will say this unapologetically, especially in evangelicalism, because evangelicals have so married themselves to the political right that they've become one and the same, and evangelicals need to be encouraged to rediscover justice as a core biblical value. 
mm -hmm. and dispense of the politics and be biblical. And I would also make that same charge to Christians who are, are left leaning and are too married to the Democratic Party, that there is a vision of justice that is biblical and clergy need to rediscover that biblical and become prophetic in that sense. So if you go with the biblical, it's almost like the science in a sense. You can't go, you know, just stick with the science. In this case, stick with the Bible. Well, even more, well, certainly stick with the Bible. Mm -hmm. But here is what uh, typically uh, the the religious right uh, tend to focus more on those issues that tend towards what they consider moral. Okay, same sex marriage, uh, homosexuality. Okay, and um, the religious, uh, uh, the the political left, yeah. the religious left tend towards justice issue, social justice. And the truth of the matter is the biblical vision of justice calls for a righteousness and a justice for all. And the church needs to rediscover that message in its totality uh, so that there can be a call for righteousness, but also a protection of people's justices, of uh, people's uh, uh, rights uh, from a justice perspective in a democratic society. Outstanding. Now. Uh, before I let you go, what do you hope that people will take from this po symposium uh, tonight? Just a greater level of understanding and, um, and just a sensitizing of the heart and spirit. Most people retreat uh, to uh, their philosophical political camps and stay entrenched there until it's their opportunity to speak. And I'm, I'm hoping that the, these women are able to coax people out of those positionings for a time of listening, a time of learning, and I'm hoping that this will help advance the conversation forward. Okay, that, that, that letter that we're talking about, if you want to Google it, is uh, Dr. King, a letter from the Birmingham jail. You can read more of Pastor uh, Dr. William Glover's writings, their books. Yes, um, uh, Justice. Um, God uh, Systems uh, and uh, you can get it on Amazon.com and uh, written by the Reverend Dr. William L. Glover. There you go. All that's happening right here at Mount Hermon Ministries. The night is early on. People leap is live. It's here. Johnny on the spot. I'm excited about tonight. I get a chance to talk to some black ladies. You guys know me. I'm always talking to the ladies. So we'll be right back with more conversation right here before the symposium starts uh, here at um, Mount Hermon Ministries. We'll be right back. Stay right there. Stay right there for a second.